God's word with us. Let's stretch our hands unto him and trust that the Lord will use him to bring God's word to us. And that though we are people that live in this world, we'll know that we do not belong to the world. That no longer shall we borrow ideas, shall we borrow styles, shall we um, copy the things that are out there in the world. But that the world will look at us and will desire the Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for this, your son. We pray that as he ministers to us, that you will use him. We know he has done the preparation. We pray that through all his efforts, Father, speak. For we, your children, are listening. Empower him, Lord, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. That today, as many as are here, will each be strengthened in you, built in you, empowered to live lives set apart for you. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Don't I, think I'm beating I, I him. I don't uh, think that is an amen. And... Uh, yeah, when uh, a reverend chooses to slap the preacher, then you just know that things of the world are a little bit coming back. But we glorify the name of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I was almost responding and telling him, because, you know, the, the, sometimes it appears as though it is small, yet you're feeling the pinch. Yeah, I want to really thank God for this time that he has given me come and share the goodness of God to all of us. My name is Oscar Sabit Kagonyera, and I serve and work as uh, the country coordinator explore correspondence at African Evangelistic Enterprise Uganda. It is a joy to be here. I've been at All Saints, done a lot of ministry here in the main service overnight, but it is my first time to do ministry uh, in uh, the youth service. So it is such a joy. <laughs> Praise be to God. Now, friends, as we get into the word, I just want you to think about something very small. I want you to think about a relationship of a guy and this lady, or your relationship. And this guy has always told you how much he loves you. And you've always responded to him and told him, I love you so, so much. And this boy is this faithful that he goes ahead and buys a very expensive ring and he comes and proposes to you. Sometimes I'm a little bit skeptical on the, uh, the way guys do propositions to, uh, these days. Number one, someone takes you and you're in the middle of Tseka market and the guy kneels down. Some have won slaps, others have been disappointed because we copy the world. So this guy brings this ring very expensive. And then he gives it to you. And you're very happy and very touched. And then in a short while, it is your wedding time. And the guy brings another ring that is very expensive. Now, as you begin your marriage, as you begin your journey, you come to realize that this guy actually loves the ring more than you. That every time he comes home, he's focusing on the ring more than you, that is going to hold your hand and is going to keep on rotating the ring and is going to keep on touching the ring and is going to ask you, how do you find the ring? Yet he has not even asked you how you spent your day. How would you feel? Now, when we get to Romans, friends, there are things that are coming out very well. The Lord is simply saying, if you're to understand Romans 18, we a little bit got verse 17. He begins by saying, remember in verse 18 he says, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people. Now in 17, this is what uh, the Bible says, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. Praise be to God. For in the gospel, friends, not in the way you look like, not in the way you, be, you, you do your things. Yes, you may look so nice, but it's the gospel of Christ seen through you. So he says, through the word of God, the gospel, the, through the gospel, then we see God. Praise be to God. And then when he comes to 18, he says, now another revelation is here. 
the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven. Again to men. Now first, God is revealing his goodness, his abilities, his love, and everything to each and every one of us. But again, he's bringing another element. Much as all that has been done, not everyone has chosen to go with God. And if you choose not to, then the wrath of God is coming. Now, friends, uh, one of the reasons why Reverend said a man from the world, there is a time I was at UCU. I am going to do ministry. And I called three students. I said, can three people come in front? In front. Courageous students came forward. And I asked them, if I wasn't here as a preacher, but they just brought me out of the blue, and they brought me in front, and they asked you, when you look at this man, what do you think of him? Literally none of them said I see a born again Christian. No one said I see a preacher of the word in me. But all of them were simply saying when you see when someone sees you first time, they see a drunkard. They see a tough guy. They see someone who must have been using drugs. And I'm like you guys. Honestly, even in chapel, that is what you're able to see. But I want to tell you, now, the revelation of the good news of Christ probably is not anywhere close to you. And that is what they are saying. But again, it was the fact. Because I found myself soaked into the world right from my primary seven. And this starts right from home. Because our dad, you know, there are things when we talk about do not copy. There are many things we have been copying. So our dad comes because he, 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 he was blessed of God, and things were a little bit okay, and there was a simple bar, the way you find a simple bar, at home, a house bar. And he said, when you're in P7, you are entitled to one bottle of beer, because I don't want you to go anywhere. And my brothers were ahead of me, some would do two, others three, but for me, because I was in P7, one. Now, I had an issue. When I see my brother doing two bottles and yours, you know, there is a way it moves fast for those who have been there. Yeah, I can see some of you. You can't pretend, but I can see. Hallelujah, I can. So I am a, I'm, I'm locked up and I gone like that. Now, by the time I was done with my vacation, P7, and I'm joining high school, I was already at a given level. And what even made things worse? Because for him, he said, I don't want any one of you to go to bars, to go anywhere that you're looking for beers. What comes? I am at home seated, he's not there. And there is this advert of Guinness. And the advert is on a nice screen and you're watching. And you know, they get this bottle of beer out of the fridge. They get this glass. And the whole thing is really, you know, they pour it and the person speaking, you really feel like, you know, you're watching, but you feel like you're actually there. You're participating in the advert. And after the whole advert, I was over the gate running to look for the same Guinness. Because the way they had talked about Guinness Black, the power. Now I wanted to feel that power. Mm, black is gold. You can see Reverend. Hey, I'm two people from the world. Hey, so you're held up. And I am there. And I reach the bar. And I tell them, I need this bottle of beer. That is right from the fridge. Because on the advert... It was from the fridge, not the crate. So probably the sweetness comes right from there. And this man is pulling out the bottle of beer. And I'm like, you must give me a glass. And they bring a glass. And I pour the, the Guinness there. And you know it is really bubbling and it is black. And you're already salivating and you feel like you want to swallow the glass and the bottle plus the Guinness. So that you feel the power. Why? I saw it somewhere, and the world claims it is the power. And I'm down there, and I begin, and when I got the glass, and I took the first sip, it was the opposite of the advert. 
Swallowing the Guinness in the glass was now a problem because I was taking bail. Now this one is sour. This, yes, it is cold, I feel that, but there is something different. And because you want to be part of the world, I struggled and swallowed and I finished the bottle. And I asked for this. See, I'm talking of P7. When I was joining second rentary, the first thing I earned out of Ontario school was an expulsion letter because of drinking and escaping from school. And how does it happen? We leave a team of young guys from Kampala. We begin swelling. For us, we can't go to Vision Empire. This Vision Empire is for villagers from around Mbarara, Western Uganda. We hire a car and we come to Club Silk from Mbarara on a weekend. And we come, and we are there, man. These guys must understand that we are guys from Kla. Hey, you know, you, man, people can swell even when they have no control. Just turn to your neighbor and you say, man, we've been swelling. Tell them, don't fear. Even if he feels like, yeah, there are those who don't want to even respond. Look at them and say, hello, I'm telling you, we can swell. There is, so we are there, and we are happening. We are in club. And then time is running fast, and the car is outside waiting. And then at around 2.33, we dive in the car. We must run and get to Ontario on time. And there we come, and everything is okay. We are drunk. We are high. I take our guys from Kampala. As we were reaching a place called Mukagate, the car gets a tire puncture. We all together, we were four guys. We got ourselves together. And all of us, rich as we were, we all had 2,800 shillings. Four people in the car. The car is down. The driver has no money. 2,800. Now, let me tell you, you can think that you have the world in your hands, but the date is going to show you that you are actually foolish. That is when you will understand. We stood there, and morning came when we were there. No one could move. None of us had transport to get to Mbarara. Morning came. The car, uh, they worked on the tire. We arrived at Intari at around 11 in the morning. And as we were jumping over the fence, guys told us, even if you don't jump over the fence, come through the main gate, because your luggage is already at the headmaster's office. City bonds. That is when we knew that we are actually fools. And they came for us, and they took us there. They packed us on the pickup, and they brought us to the bus park, and there we were. Guys who were sharp, guys who knew that we are of high class, when we were on the pickup going, we encouraged one another, and we kept on saying, The ones who have called the other ones, they are on a pickup leaving the school. The ones you were showing, are remaining in the school, showing what? We get into the taxi, in the bus. The bus, let me tell you, the day they will expel you. My sister, the day you're going to think, the day you realize that you're pregnant, when you're not yet married, that is when you're going to know that nine months are very short. Two weeks, you see the head of the kid is already doing like this. One month, you hear the legs are already doing like this. I'm telling you, friends, you can copy, but there are things that are hard to copy. The day we left Mbarara, I can assure you, I think the bus traveled for two hours. Everywhere, woo, woo, anyone coming out, no, Busega. And in a short while, we are in the bus park. Now, the ones who were four, two of us, we are taking Bugolobi route, and then Two, we are taking other routes. We get into the park, and as we were there, encouraging, oh man, these guys, they must have understood that city guys don't joke. We get into the taxi. Man, taxi, Kampala has jam. But the day you are in trouble, you are going to realize every traffic light, the Spirit of God speaks green, green. When you arrive, green, green. And the car does not stop. In a very short while, we were already, I was in Bugolo. Man, I went and I reached there. And now knocking at the gate, it was another story. I'm like, now how do I start? Your own home, where you've been, where you've stayed, you're scared of even knocking. When you so much copy the world, 
time comes and you answer. And there we are arriving. And all I had was an expulsion letter. And this went on. And then I joined, I go through so many schools, high school. I was in five schools, senior one, senior six. And then there I joined Makere. I joined a school of law. And when I was at campus, that is the worst. Because now the freedom was there. However much the course was hard, there was freedom. Friends, there are many things we've copied. There are many things we think we are in control of. But I want to tell you, the day is coming when the white, when God is going to reveal the truth to you. He says, I have, when I release my wrath, when I release it, you will understand. Now, as we get into that, friends, I'll keep on mixing. When you go to uh, the book of 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, friends, chapter 8, verse, uh, verse, from verse 5 downwards. I want to try and be fast. The Bible says, I want to begin uh, by uh, reading verse 19. We want a king over us. Then we will be like other nations with the king. Now, friends, listen to the statement. These are Israelites. They have been with God. They have seen the goodness of God. They have tested every time of the Lord. The Lord has made a way in the middle of the water. The Lord has fed them. The Lord has given them whatever. Now, when they reach a place, they are saying, listen to us. They, they, they've gone. They've seen his goodness. Time comes and they are saying, okay, the Lord has been there, but we want a king. Now, they are simply saying, we are trading our liberty for someone to be above us. We want a king to be above us. We want someone to be above us. Friends, every time you relate to the world, you're simply trading whatever God has given you for a new ruler over your life. Some of us, we've traded it for just immorality. In our relationships, you know it. You, because you love this guy so much, you think the only way you can prove your love is by every day spending a weekend at his place. Now, if you start living like married people before you're married, when you get married, will you go to your home on weekends? They said we want a king, and not just a king, but one who will be so that we can be like others. He is above us, but we are like others. They want to be like others. They speak in a way so that they can be like others. They dress in a way so that they can be like others. They move in a way so that they can be like others. You know, it is so terrible to get married to this woman who was very beautiful. She dresses up and she's very, very hot like they say. She has got the legs, she has the hips. You know, all these things don't add anything to marriage. They don't. They don't. The hips are there. Then the legs are there. Then there is uh, uh, this other commodity that is always following you after you've gone. You find you have it in, in large quantities and everywhere you pass, people look at you because you have another commodity that follows, follows. Eh? Hallelujah. Ladies know what I'm saying. And then, when you are in this marriage, the woman also knows that whatever took your heart is actually not hers. They used injections to get these commodities. She used injections to get these hips. Now, when you give birth to children, you literally see your wife is fat, you're fat, but all kids are small. You're like, Why original? I'm telling you that marriage, if God is to reveal the actual woman before the revelation, the woman will have, the man will have divorced. Why? Two different people. There is that one who has got hips that don't belong to her. And then now that one may it be okay. There are these ones sold. You sit in a taxi. Our taxis have got pennies everywhere. You sit with your extended bum. As you're sitting, you sit on a nail. It pierces one side. 
you don't understand. You come out of a taxi in your gene. One side is heavy, another one is lacking, wanting. And you're in that state, copying the world. There are men who are held up. So they said, we want to be like other nations. We just don't want a king, but we want to be like other nations. How many things have we done so that we can be like others? Think about them. I was telling my friends, where you find sisters have got extended nails. I'm not saying remove them if you have them. Glory to God. You have ex but they can even work as teaspoons. They are long enough to get sugar out of a sugar bowl into a teacup and even mixing. Someone buys a phone, but even you are unable to tap on your phone, but you have to first stretch and make sure you... you. Why extended? The Lord has given you those nails because he knew they are perfect for you. He has given you that, whatever it is, whether you have hips or you don't have them, God knew that is who you are meant to be. You don't need any extension on your body. You don't. Praise be to God. And they want, so listen to what they say. They want this other person, the king, one, to lead them. Now, all things I'm talking about are things that are leading the world, this generation today. They wanted the king to be like other, so that they can, the king should lead them. What is that that leads you, friends? You know what leads you. You know it. You know it. You know what leads you. Some of you are led by makeup. Glory to God. But you know, yes, without makeup, you know who you look like. You know it. Think about yourself without it. Think about yourself without it. Just think about, that is you. Yes, you can move around. You can show that, ah, man, my nose is small. You know they can make your makeup and you find a person, a woman you know very well. You know that she has got a round nose like mine. But you find her with a very sharp nose. You're like, eh, katunda wa Israel, makeup. Makeup. Just run when you find it. So they are led by makeup. Without makeup, self-confidence is not there. Without it, they cannot go out. Without it, they cannot. So they, they said we want a king to lead us. Number two, to go out before us. Now, friends, simply he's saying it was a denial of your own identity. If God has created me, he has given me the power to face the world. Now, if I cannot go without makeup, then that means that I, I, I'm scared of my identity. He must go before us. And number three, fight for us in our battles. To be like, now, this person should fight for them. Now, the good words that are being, he says, to fight for us in our battles. Now, the guy fighting is not fighting his battles, but he's fighting your battle. Now, friends, let me tell you, the makeup can fight your battles. You enter the office and the makeup is the first. They're like, Mama, Hoyomuadom Limuko TV. The day power will go off and the lights are there, very men, and you begin sweating. The boss will see you, Oyo, Mugobi and Gatana Malidiza program. Why? Because what went before you has disappeared, has gone back. What has always gone before you, friends? He said, the king will go before us. Now we copy things that go before us. We dress up in a way that will appeal to the world. It goes before you. When they see you, they are like, mama, mama, mama. And many times, there are those who are courageous. They, have, they are well set up from here, upwards. They are okay. From here downwards, trouble but they close their eyes as if they don't know that down is in trouble. And then you find them in a dress and they are moving. And you're counting, you're like, Ovaka Gurukana to that body that is up. Now, if you're working on this side, even work on the legs that are going to contain the remaining body. Hallelujah. I know now some are annoyed. Even if you get annoyed, you've known the truth. Copying the world. They wanted. And when you go down, he says, 
Now, when we get down, you see so many things. They are doing this. They have forgotten me. They have forsaken me. And Samuel is moving on. And he said, just know that they have not rejected you. But instead, these people have rejected me. Now, when Samuel heard these words, he prayed. Friends, before you look for someone to go before you, prayer is the greatest thing you can ever use. When Samuel got to know, he went down and prayed. Friends, let me tell you, before even your makeup goes forward, prayer can go before you and change things. Before even your dress alarms and, and it, is, it is like, you, you, you know there are dresses that are, I used to struggle with ladies. There are ladies who work on their hair. And you find they have many ropes around, eh? like different colors. Green, red, blue, yellow, orange. Uh, you know all of them are on the same head. Now, when you're on Kampala streets and you're walking, you see something coming, you're like... Now, you courageous say maybe the, it is one of these things they set by the roadside to advise... But you see someone coming, really, with... And you reach there and you realize it's a human being, honestly, with some parties, blue, green, red, and orange friends. Yes, people can see you. But when you go back, I, I can assure you, if you don't have money for dinner, you will still sleep hungry. Hello? Even when they say she has got hair, you will sleep hungry. So they struggle. He said, they've rejected me, but Samuel prayed. And the Lord told him, listen, go ahead and give them what they want. Now, after all that had been done, friends, this is what he said in verse 9. But warn them. But go ahead and warn them. They want a king. The king is going to take their sons. The king is going to take them through problems. The king will make them cry. The king is going to make their lives hard. The king is going to make life tough. The king will take their portions. The king will always take whatever they have. The king is going to take them through a tough time. Friends, they are things we've used and held as our kings. But they've taken us through a lot. They've taken us through a lot. When I was at campus, one time my father called me and he said, Oscar, where are you? I am at Case Clinic. Can you come, please? I am struggling. I don't have blood and your brothers are, seem not to have the same bl uh, blood with me. Can you come so that you can give me some blood? He called me at around midday. But the time he was calling, I was already drunk at campus Makiriri. Now, the question that came into my heart was, am I going to give this guy blood or am I going to give him liquor? I got to the car. I drove and came, I came to Case Clinic. And when I reached their friends, they took my blood, but I was scared, very scared. And after testing, they did whatever they were doing. And later, again, he tells me, let's go to Nankurabi. We're going to do some pork. Praise be to God. Now, pork is not an abomination. So I went for pork. And as we were there, he looked at me and he said, Oscar, what is the problem? I asked him why. He said, I've looked at you every day. You're shrinking. You're getting finished every day. I told him it is because of the pressure of the course I was doing. But he was looking at the way I was getting finished. I used to drink, but I used not to eat. Why? Campus money is limited. Whenever you get 20,000, First, how many bottles can I get? The remaining is for Rolex. I was getting done. He saw me get finished, and he was concerned. And he said, I called you at Case Clinic, not because I wanted blood, but I was scared. I thought maybe you contracted HIV, and you, do, you didn't want to say it out. That is where we had reached. And friends, in that state... That is when now I started seeing so many things. When I lost friends at campus, we are coming from Masaka. Many people were are killed. I reached a point and I was at prime time friends. And then the first, by the me accepting Christ, it was in phases. I accepted him the first time because of a girl. Because she had told me, campus, sir, you want to be in love with me? You must accept Christ. Now that is the power of a woman. When she said it, prime time I was there, number one. I sat very close because I knew we are always many campuses there. So I knew if I sit very far, she may say, why wow, I didn't see you. Now again, she forces me to go back and I accept Christ. So I was in front, but I was again high. 
Now, when the man was preaching, preaching, the first time I was there praying, God, help me so that this pastor does not forget to make an altar call because if he does, I'm finished. I'm finished. Now the man preaches and preaches and you know he gets it and he's like, now friends, I want to tell you, friends who are here, in my heart I'm like, uh-huh, now altar call. Friends, Jesus loves you. I'm like, now again, yeah. The man begins another sermon. When he made and was making the altar call, I marched and moved via the swimming pool. I had to be number one because I knew, man, campuses give their lives to Christ for, you know, Kajanja. They come in big numbers. You can disappear there. And you know there are many guys who are there, very tall, and you are short. You are there trying to raise your head. You can't. I was number one. I stood there like this. The man continued preaching. Now same, Pastor Semper came. He said, Oscar, I told him, I'm very okay. I've come to accept Christ. But inside I knew. And after the whole sermon, they made an altar call. People came, joined me, and we went. They preached. And after we came back up, I called her. I was like, hello? I have accepted Christ. Where am I, uh, when am I going to see you? She said, eh. now the problem came in when I told her I've accepted Christ and she said, wow, ha, praise the Lord. Now I didn't know, I just told him, hey, how are you? I, because the answer was not there. So now I'm in the thing, but I'm now trying. It is laying a trap. When I go to her, she said, okay, what I'm going to do, I'll come to your room. Friends, I prepared my room. The world can kill. Campasa. I went to my room, I cleaned it, I, I made sure that everything, from morning to evening, preparing for this girl. At around four, you hear a knock. Reaching there, you find a guy standing, you're like, man, what's wrong with you? A man, I'm busy, I'm reading, you go. The guy goes, until around 7.30, this girl comes. Let me tell you, friends, when you accept Christ, stick, stick, just stick to that, to, to Christ. The girl came and knocked. When I had bought two bottles of soda, mine and hers, because really, you know, those things, like if you have three K, you can only buy two sodas. So she comes in, and when she enters, I was happy. After she had just entered, she had a fleet of other girls, like seven. Now, for them, when they entered, it was like they had told them, we are entering a demon den. They entered and they started, Rabbi and Nebuchadnezzar, fire in this place, fire everywhere, fire, fire. Now, I'm expecting this one girl, I have my soda and her soda, and then there is another team coming. And they began praying and they prayed. When they started talking of fire, I went to my room, I went to my door near the, uh, the room. I was at the door, I was like, this fire, fire. The thing comes, I leave you in the room, it consumes you alone, me, I'm not ready. I stayed there looking at them. Then after like 15 minutes of prayer, that is when they came and they said, and you know the, there is this kajanja of uh, born again Christians. Everyone is a brother, sister. So they begin, huh, praise the Lord, brother. In my heart, I was like, over oh, whose brother? Who, who do you call your brother? And then they greet. Then after they did whatever they were doing, I didn't talk about the sodas. I was like, compensation is on the soda. They did everything. They went out. When they left, I called. I was like, hello? Why did you tell me you're coming? And you didn't tell me that you're coming with your friends. Does God accept lying? Hey, man, we can look for different. Does God accept lying? You should have told me that you're many. Then... She was like, okay, I'm sorry. Now what do we do? Let me tell you, you come to my room. I'm going to, we shall talk and we agree and we end this. She was in Mary Stewart. Last floor up. The day she gave me an appointment, people who found me climbing stairs going up, it was like they have got a new generator with new fuel and new oil. I climbed, reached up, and when I got there, Banang girls, girls can be good. She, I reached there, she was like, can I get you tea? I was like, Ibanange, hurry, hurry, hurry. Campus, you don't miss food. She started preparing. As we were there, organizing and waiting for bread, she's trying to work on it, a knock. And then there comes now this, uh, man, 
Christian girls also you. So she comes, she reaches there and she's like, but I praise the Lord, sister. Can you imagine I had a dream about you last night? Now I'm like, imagine last night. We are already in another night. From morning, you didn't come to tell her. Then at this time, when I have just arrived, it is when you're coming. Bananga, I had a dream about you. I was like, let me come. But now she sits, and now she's, let me tell you, we need to even pray. As we were there, before she finished, tata, another knock. Banange, eh, eh, uh, it's good, Lizzie. Yeah, Banange, when you told me about the dream, I was like, we need to come and pray. Did we even talk anything? When I came out of that girl's room, I went down discouraged. I said, God, if salvation is like this, mm -hmm, take your salvation, let me go back to my world. Friends, they are things that we just do for the sake of doing. But let me tell you, the right time came and God trapped me. God grabbed me. I was in my second semester, second years were concluding, and God held me at that. But as he was holding me, friends, all these things we are talking about, he makes this statement as I conclude and we go, friends. Listen, in verse 21 Romans, he says, For through, for though they knew God, they never glorified him as God. Nor gave, uh, nor gave thanks to him. Even when they knew God, they never glorified him. What do we glorify as young people? We glorify friendship. We glorify designs. We glorify our phones. We glorify hairstyles. We glorify things that are not going to add anything. He said, they never glorified me. And because they never glorified me, in verse 22 he said, although they claimed to be wise, even when they claimed to be wise. Let me tell you, there are no people who are wise like, guys, youths of this generation, they can claim to be wise. You find a young man, and you begin saying, ah, man, yesterday I was reading about Biden. The guy begins telling you about America. He doesn't know where the airport is. He has never been there. But the guy is going to tell you, America, America, America. And you, you really see America. But the guy doesn't know Entebbe Airport. He has never even been there. Guys can pretend to be wise. Just turn to your neighbor and you look at their eyes, you see. Hallelujah. You pretend. Even when you claim to be wise, he says, you became fools. This is the word of God. Even when you claim to be wise, you ended up becoming what? Ah, ah, this is the word of God. Even when you claim to be wise, you ended up becoming you ended up becoming I want you to think about those many times or those few times you've thought you're wise and you end up becoming a fool you look a fool in your own relationship the guy dumps you or you dump this guy they looked fools and then he goes ahead and he says in 24 therefore God gave them over he released them there are times when God reaches and is like I'm releasing I'm releasing you. Friends, we don't need to wait for that time. I reached a time when I was at campus, dear friends. I felt I needed to get off alcohol. I was using alcohol. I was using drugs. The day I accepted Christ, I go to my room. I go to my room. I locked myself there. And I was in pain. I had reached a point of sitting at campus. You sit in the lecture room. And you literally need to keep holding yourself like this. Because I felt like there were spaces, air spaces inside me. I got into my room. In my life, the hardest time I have ever encountered is the time I was in that room. Until my father came and they broke the door. I said, if I'm to die, let me die. Putting things together for the sake of Christ but I'm not going to remain like this. I struggled. I was hit. I was shaking. Everything I ate would come back. My father came and he reached there. They saw me lying on the carpet. In the room, it was closed. They hit the door and pulled me out. But whatever I was going through, deep in my heart, I was determined to do it. If I'm to die, let me die putting things together for the sake of my God in heaven. Praise be to God. I went through that time. So he said, I've given up. The nation can give up. Friends can give up. But God will never give up on you. He will never. 
he will never. We are going to pray. But remember, friends, our God is still on our side. He's still there for us. He says, because of whatever they did, I just chose to give them up. And when I gave them to the world, they are filled with envy, filled with lust, filled with anger, filled with everything. Friends, what you need is Jesus. What you need is Jesus. He has been there for you. He has taken care of you. He has been there for you. He has protected you. But even when he has done that, we have become like the children of Israel. And we have said, we need other kings who can lead us, who can rule us, who can go before us. What are these things that have always gone before you? The Lord wants to take his position so that every time you step out, he goes before you. Praise be to God. Let us assemble ourselves and we pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for this time. Lord, even when your love has been evident amongst us, even through your word, you've revealed your greatness, oh Lord. But still we've not been able to follow you. Lord, we've claimed to be born again, yet what we do does not reflect your goodness. Father, we've lived in darkness even when we think we are in control. Lord, the world has brought us down. We've copied styles. There's so many things we copy every day. Yet copying is not a principle of Christianity, our faith. Father, we've done a lot of things. When we come to you, Lord, we come for healing. Because in the world, it is all about pain. It is all about sorrow. It is all about grief. But in you, oh God, we find new life. We find new life in you. You've revealed yourself. But even still, pride has taken us up. We've not thought about you. We've taken you for granted. Lord, now we come to you. And we ask you, King of Kings, to reveal more. To reveal yourself more to us, O oh Lord. Lord, you know our hearts. When the children of Israel were praying and asking for a king, they were forsaking you. Lord, many times we've sought after other kings, kings in our lives, kings in our speech, kings in our actions, kings in everything that we do. We've rejected you, O Lord. Father, we are here to repent. I ask you, Lord, to wash us. To wash us with your precious blood. To wash us with your precious blood. You said they have rejected me, but warn them. Warn them. Lord, it is because of your goodness that you're able to warn us, even in the paths that we've taken. To warn us, even in things we are about to do. To warn us, even in things that we think we should be doing. You're always warning us, O oh Lord. Friends, I know you may be here, but deep in you, you really feel there is something you've held on to and it has become your king. You lost self-confidence and you feel without this, you are not complete. But God is saying you are complete, my son. You're complete, my daughter, without even that. The Lord is saying you are complete. You're there. Something has taken part. It is part of you. It could be a habit. Maybe you're in drugs like I was. Maybe you're soaked in alcohol like I was. Maybe it is an immoral living in that relationship you're in. You're always living, living and, and doing everything that is ungodly. Maybe it could be a way of life, your lifestyle. And God is saying you need to put that aside so that I take my position. And you're there deep in you, you're saying, I really need Christ to come and take his position. And I need to give my life to Christ so that he takes his position in me. If you are there, I cannot go without giving you an opportunity. You're saying, here I am. I want to accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. Or I want to come to renew my relationship with Christ. If there is anyone 
I would just ask you to raise your hand. If there is anyone, deep in you, you feel that conviction. The Lord is saying you had put this forward and it, is, it had become a king in your life. It had become everything. It had taken God's position. You're there saying, here I am. If there is anyone, I will ask you to raise your hand and we pray together. If there is anyone, friends, do not let pride take you, but just say, here I am, Christ, for you know in Christ. Thank you, my sister. God bless you. You know it deep in you. You're saying, I am struggling with this. I am battling with this. You can't be a Christian. The Israelites knew God. They had moved with God. They had fellowship with the Lord. They had. They had done everything. But yet, they were able to reject him. You're there. You're saying, here I am. Maybe you had rejected him in your path. You rejected God. You turned. You took another path. I'll ask you to raise your hand. And you say, here I am. Thank you, sister. God bless you. God bless you. God be with you. Thank you, my brother over there. God bless you. I know we are battling with some things. Maybe it is even pride. Maybe it is anger. Maybe it is that small thing that looks small, but you're struggling with it. God is saying, here I am. I want to take my position. I want to take my position. Just put up your hand and we pray together. Just put up that hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, friends. Thank you, my brother there. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, friend. I know. I know we are battling with things in our lives. Yes, you can be confident. Thank you over there, brother. Thank you. God bless you. I can assure you there is a time he said, warn them. There is a time that is going to be hard. And you remember, they told me, just put up that hand. Don't be scared of anything. God bless you. God bless you, friends. God bless you. Those who are raising up their hands, I'll just ask you where you are. Just raise the hand up very well. Just say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this word. Your word is clear. Your word is revealed to me every day. And I understand your God. Father, I ask you to release me from every kind of bondage. I surrender my life to you. Wash me with your precious blood. King of kings, today I surrender my life to you. Come and take charge. Oh God, I, I, I want to be your child. Today, write my name in the book of life. And today, save my life, oh God, for I need you more than ever. I love you. Let your blood always be a part of my life so that I can move in this salvation forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us welcome Reverend as we... Another big kind of praise to 